Today we're gonna be going over the past six months of running our startup, which on paper is worth 25 million, but in reality, well, I don't wanna talk about it. There's a lot of updates. We're gonna be talking about solo founding, finding a new co-founder, moving to a new city for the startup, and what our new product is. And yeah, hopefully talking about this is helpful to at least someone. Let's head right in. So from May to September of this year, I was a solo founder and I would say that it's actually just terrible and I would not wish this on my worst enemy. During this time, I had a lot of startup ideas that I was really excited to make. So, you know, I just spent this time validating and making them. One of these ideas was an AI agent builder and the V0 of this was an AI dining assistant app. Pretty much, it's an AI assistant in your group chat that turns your want to try list of restaurants into bookings when you guys are free. And yeah, you know, it's not the most original idea, but I would say it actually did pretty good. I made the app and just from posting on Discord and Reddit anonymously, we got up to 200 people using it every day. But what I realized was that even when things were going well, like, you know, more users or the product being done or whatever, I think solo founding was just incredibly boring. Pretty much it was just me working alone all day, like every day. And um, in New York, you know, like I didn't have that many friends doing startups as well. So yeah, even though I think this app actually has potential, I realized that in order to have a good sustainable startup, we needed at least three things. The first is a good co-founder or a team. The second is some sort of unique insight to make a product. And the third is funding. And at this point, we only have the third, which honestly I think is the least important. And we definitely don't have the first, which is the most important. So now it was time to go find a co-founder. Most of the people that I knew that were doing startups were in SF. So I came back to SF for a month to try to find a co-founder. And this time, as opposed to last year when we did YC, I never thought I'd say this, but it was actually pretty good. Also in SF, I met a lot of go-to people that gave me some advice. One of them is Scott Wu, the CEO of Cognition. I'll talk about this in the end of the video, but yeah, this time SF was actually not that bad. On the co-founder search side, I met a lot of really cool, smart people that I would work with, but honestly, I think that it's really hard unless you're already close friends. It's because you just spend so much time with this person that if you don't want to hang out or eat dinner after a full day of grinding with them, I don't know, at least for me, I think it's really hard. So at this point, I did not find a co-founder yet. So I had no co-founder, no product, and low-key our investors think we're cooked. So in the wise words of one of my idols, Steve Jobs, when life gets tough, you gotta go to India. So I went to India and shout out India. I actually love India. The food was so good. The biryani was so good. The Taj Mahal was actually beautiful. And yeah, on this trip, I did a lot of reflecting on just what I want in life. And honestly, you know, my only goal is just this startup. So I decided that even though I really love New York, I just have to move back to SF for this startup. Oh yeah, and during this trip, I actually got a call from one of my closest friends during YC. Like he was the CTO of his company and he called me saying that he left his company and was looking for a co-founder. And this was actually the first time I was actually excited to work with someone that I knew because I just saw how cracked he was during YC. And so after India, I moved back to SF to try and start working with Manav. And so now let's meet him and talk about what we're working on. So I'm gonna come down the stairs right. and you can just introduce yourself. Okay. Awesome, chill. Sure. That sounds good. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Manav. I was doing YC with my own company about a year and a half ago, which is where I met Nang. And we've been homies ever since. And I left that company about a month ago and it feels like fate that Nang and I were both looking for co-founders at the same time. So I'm super stoked to be working together and we're gonna cook up some awesome stuff. <laughs> that shit sounded scripted as hell. All right, so you guys might be wondering, what are we working on? And let me tell you. So right now, streamers have two big issues. One is when their connection ends, like they lose data or something, then the stream just goes offline. So they lose like pretty much all their viewers or like half the viewers when they go back online. And the second problem is that you can't have multiple ingests or inputs. Like if I wanted to stream with someone else, then there's no easy way for my stream to have that person's video data going to my stream. And so all my friends that are streamers have this problem. So we made a product for it called Streamable. For the past two weeks, we've actually been grinding the infra for this and it works now. I'll show you how it works. All right, so pretty much when an IRL streamer wants to start a stream, they just go to streamable.run and click start server. When an IRL streamer is streaming, they would now send their camera feed to our cloud servers. And when they click go live here, then on Twitch, they'll be live. Now for the, the big reveal is that if I turn off my Wi-Fi here and my cellular data, it's like if they go to 
like on a travel stream or something and they lose data, they don't want everybody to be kicked off the stream. So what happens here is that now everybody's still watching and they have connection lost. And yeah, it's really cool. There are solutions to this out right now, but from all my streamer friends, including Pan, shout out Pan who's um, helping us out in the background passively. All the solutions right now, all my streamer friends say it's so bad because it crashes all the time and they want a refund, but there's no other solution that they can use. So yeah, basically we made it. And yeah, when we go back online, live stream also comes back online as you would want. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm actually really excited for this um, because now all my streamer friends don't have to deal with their streams crashing. And by the time this video is out, it's probably gonna be live. And the last thing I'll say about this is, I'm sure a lot of people are like, is this the final pivot? And I would say how I'm thinking about this is it's more of just a first product that, you know, it's, it's this product alone is probably not gonna be like the next Uber or something, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So we might as well take it. But anyways, that's how I'm thinking about it. Mano, how are you feeling? Dude, I'm super pumped. It feels uh, it feels awesome when it's all working. You see the, the live stream on Twitch. So I guess uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot more streams now. Oh, and to showcase the tech of this, because I mean, like our servers are super good. Like, the infra is all really good. I don't think any streams are gonna be crashing. We're gonna be hosting the world's longest stream on streamable.run on Twitch. But yeah, that's pretty much it for what we're working on right now. And now as usual, we'll take some time to talk about it. All right, thank you so much if you made it this far in this video. You guys are actually the real ones. I don't have that much to talk about today, but the first thing is, like I said in the video, pretty much what Scott Wu told me. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know why we were meeting. I was just visiting my friend Joseph and then he called me into his office and started telling me this. But pretty much what he was saying was that the startup is less about what you're doing day to day and maybe even sometimes the product. And instead, it's mainly an investment in yourself. And you know, to this, I'm like, man, what does that even mean? And pretty much he was telling me about how in your startup career, you're gonna have a lot of viral moments. And what you wanna do is try to learn from all these experiences in your career and build yourself up so that when these viral moments happen, you're prepared and worthy to make something of it. So yeah, that makes sense and pretty much what I've been on. I think this past year, I'm not gonna lie, has been pretty atrocious for the company but it led me to now where I actually finally feel good about it. But yeah, that's about it for me. I think for you guys, thank you guys so much for sticking along. And recently the most common questions I get are like, should I do a startup? Should I quit my job? Should I study CS? And I'm honestly happy to give my thoughts and I do, but I think it's ultimately like the saying, you know, if you want the worst advice, you should just ask everyone. And I think that deep down, only you know what you should do. And so you kind of just have to follow that. If you can't do that for whatever circumstances, then I understand, but I don't know. I've seen my YouTube analytics and pretty much for you guys and me as well, like the biggest blocker to this is playing too much League of Legends. And yeah, the only person that can change that is you. And yeah, you know, I joke a lot in these videos to try to keep the whimsy up and all, but I think on a real note, the goal still the same is just to be goaded and have a goaded company. Definitely think it's gonna take a lot of time, but I also definitely think it's gonna happen one day. Anyways, thank you guys so much for following along for the journey. And if you want daily updates, follow me on Instagram. It's at notnay. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.